Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a one-way analysis of variance in the statistical program PASW, uh, formerly known as SPSS, that's Predictive Analytics Software, uh, formerly known as the Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. It's a common uh, statistical program. I'm going to be using a data set that exists already in uh, SPSS. PASW as a sample is called the 1991 U.S. General Social Survey. By the way, that's a survey that's done every year, and it's a fabulous data set. It's got a large nationally representative sample, and I believe, how many cases do we have in this one? If I scroll way down, um, man, oh, we've got over 1,200. I think we have 1,500. Anyhow, large, uh, large data set. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using uh, one-way analysis of variance to compare three different groups um, because if you have more, if you're using a categorical predictor, in this case I'm going to be using one with three groups, and you have a single quantitative outcome, um, then analysis of variance is usually what you want to use. I'm going to be using this variable right here, it's called happy, in which people say whether they consider themselves very happy, pretty happy, or not too happy. And I'm going to be relating it to a person's level of education. Now, I realize that, you know, technically I should be using education to predict happiness, but that gets into a very complicated procedure, uh, multinomial logistic regression. We don't want to do that. On the other hand, if I'm just looking at an association, it works just fine to use happiness in association with education. Now, before you do an analysis of variance or any uh inferential statistic, you should always do the background work. And I've done that already. Let me show you what I got here. I did a bar chart on how happy people are. And by the way, I'm just doing the defaults here. I think they're ugly and I would clean them up, but these are the defaults. So if you do them, they'll look the same. This is general happiness. Most people are pretty happy. That's kind of, you know, that's good. Uh, on the other hand, a fair number are very happy and a smaller number are not too happy, which is unfortunate. Here's the same data in a pie chart if you're into that kind of thing. Again, pretty, uh, pretty happy, very happy, not too happy. Okay, so that's looking at my categorical variable. Then, uh, education is a quantitative variable, and there's two ways I like to do that. Number one is with a histogram, so I can get a feel for the general shape of the distribution. And again, this is the default. It's ugly. I would change it if I were doing something else. And I've got, um, I believe, another video that talks about that. Anyhow, uh, the important thing to know here is we've got this huge spike here, and that is at 12 years of education. That's high school. Then we've got uh, another one right here. That's 14 years. That's usually for an associate's degree. And then we've got one right here uh, at 16 years. That's usually a bachelor's degree. And it goes up to these would be master's degrees, possibly law degrees, and then medical or PhDs. Although, me personally, I go right there. i got 24 years. Please note, though, we have some people who go down to zero. It's kind of freaky. That's very low. And in fact, uh, when I do a quantitative variable, I follow it up with a box plot. And again, this is ugly. I'd clean it up. But it gives me an idea. I've got outliers. The people who have 20 years of education are outliers. The people with less than eight years of education are also outliers. And there's our zeros. Um, this bar right here, the thick one, is the median, half or above, half or below, and that is at 12 years. That's Remember, we had that big spike at high school. Uh, let's go back up for a second. Whoa, too far. There's the big spike. And the middle 50% go from 15 years uh, between the associates and the bachelors and 12 years. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of background. I know that I have some outliers on education. Um, things are not totally evenly distributed on happiness, but it's close enough and I can deal with it. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to come back down to the bottom here, so I'm going to go to Analyze to compare means to one-way analysis of variance, also known as ANOVA or ANOVA, you know, pronounce it either way. And again, it's one way because I'm using one factor, in this case, happiness, which has three categories, uh, to predict or in association with a quantitative outcome, which is level of education. So I click that. And the dependent list is my outcome. Now the neat thing about an analysis of variance, one way analysis of variance, is you can pick more than one outcome. I'm just going to do one to keep things simple for right now. 
um, I am going to look at general happiness as my factor, the thing that predicts. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And then this one right here, highest year of school completed, educ, is my outcome variable. So I'm going to get that and stick it over here in the dependent list. Now, if I just hit OK and do the default, here's what I get. What this tells me is that the between groups, that's comparing the three levels of education, I can skip over this, skip over this, skip over this. This is the F statistic, and it starts at zero and it goes up, and truthfully, this is pretty big. Uh, and if you take the F and the degrees of freedom over here, then that gets you the significance value. Now, it's not actually zero, it just because it, it's just because it only gives us three decimal places it's less than 0, 0, 001, uh, which is statistically significant because the normal cutoff is anything less than 0 0.05, which is a 5% false positive rate. So we're doing really well here. However, I want to show you some follow-up stuff that we tend to do. If I do some of the options in the one-way analysis of variance, for instance, I ask it to give me the means for each group, and I ask it to do a plot for each group. And press OK. And now, I get that same table I got a moment ago, but now I have the means for each group. People who are very happy have, on average, 13.34 years of education. People who are pretty happy, 12.78. People who are not too happy is 12.12. So we also have confidence intervals, and that's all kind of nice. Here's the same table that we had earlier, and here's a means plot, which actually makes it look like it's an enormous difference, which it isn't really. In fact, I'm going to back up, and I'm going to do another graph to look at the difference. I'm going to do a bar chart to show the mean. Uh, I'm just going to do that, the default. Okay, I've already set this up. I'm going to have happiness as my category axis. Then I'm going to pick level of education. I'm going to stick it. Uh, i got to tell I'm going to do the mean right there. And I'm actually going to do a confidence interval uh, to give me an idea for the variation, especially because the confidence interval for these groups is, is closely related to the results of the analysis of variance. I'm going to click OK and click OK here. And um, the graph will pop up in a second. And there it is. And what you see is this pretty linear pattern. It's the same pattern, but this one makes it look huge. On the other hand, please note, it goes from 12 to 13. It's not a really big difference. And this one makes it clear. It starts at 0, and it goes up to 12 and a half, 13. And you can see, yeah, it goes starts here. It steps down. It steps down. And these confidence intervals are pretty small. So... It, it is statistically significant, but there's not a lot of variation. Now, here's the trick with analysis of variance. This is telling us, if I go back up to this table, this is telling us that there is a difference among the means, but without telling us exactly which means are making it different. Now, we do see a pattern, but notice also the confidence interval here is wider than the others. Um, so what we're going to do is what's called a post hoc test. I'm going to come back to the same analysis I did once already one-way analysis of variance, and this time I'm going to add something called a post-hoc. Now, the Bonferroni post-hoc test and the Chaffe test are both very common, but I'm going to use the two-key test because it gives an output that I think is a lot easier to read. Besides, the Bonferroni and the Chaffe are too conservative. They will tell you that things are not statistically different from each other when they are sometimes. And so I like the two-key, so I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to press OK. It's going to give me all the same stuff as before with an additional table. Uh, two, actually. There's the means that we saw before. There's the analysis of variance that says the zero that is statistically significant. This is the tricky one right here. What this one tells us is that the very happy and the pretty happy are significantly different from each other. So are the very happy and the not too happy because these numbers are less than 05. However, Pretty happy and very happy. We saw that a moment ago, but look at this. Pretty happy and not too happy. It's still there, but it's small. It's smaller. Uh, this is what I like about the two keys. It gives me this table, and it lets groups things. We have the 1212, the 1278, the 34. And what it says is that all three of them represent statistically significant different groups. That's important because sometimes what you'll find is like group one is different from group two and three, which are not different from each other. And there's the same plot we had before. Anyhow, that's a one-way analysis of variance, and I hope that helps. Thank you.